Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. The views and opinions expressed in this video and on UME Radio YouTube channel are those of the host and or the guests and do not necessarily reflect the opinion of UME Radio YouTube channel. Let's talk relationships on, on you, me, me radio. radio. So what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business, and love, emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty, and DJ KTE on everything. From hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationships. Arguments for the grown. Get the UME Radio app to listen wherever you are. That is UME Radio. One word. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, hi. This is a nice segment of LPR. Let's talk relationship. Or relationships, right? <laughs> yes. So we've been having a wonderful time over the last few months. Uh, different topic, different issues that we've been discussing that relates to relationships. And um, we've had quite a few awesome responses from the audience. And we so endeavor to continue um, sharing on this platform here. And tonight, welcome to Gloria. Thank you. Thank you for having good, me. Good to have you here. <laughs> you, you, for, those, for those of you who are watching us, or have been watching us faithfully, you've seen us have new, new faces every time because... On this particular show here, and, uh, and our vision is that we, we, we give people a, a, a voice. I always say we amplify, amplify one's voice. Yes. So we have a new face. We have our Lady Misty who has always been here. Yes. And, you know, she has been feeling well and she's recovering. And we just pray her strength in the Lord that she'll just recover nicely. Yes. We love her dearly and miss her. Misty, come back, come back. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> but we hope that she'll just be be well. Um, and she always be saying, hey, where's my tribe? Where's my tribe? So I miss that that her phrase, you know, my YouTube yeah. tribe. <laughs> That's Lady Misty for you. So we're here tonight with, uh, with an awesome um, uh, guest, a host guest. <laughs> and um, you may see more of her, but we're happy to have her here. Thank so you. So how are you feeling today? How was your day today? Ah, uh, today was hectic, but it was good. It, it was, was good? good. Yes. Was it as busy as mine, as crazy as mine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to stay awake. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you just gotta keep going, going, going. Yeah. How yeah. was your day? It, you was it was busy. Crazy. It was mm. busy, and I, I, I had I found myself was just um, kind of wearing many hats today. One of oh. those many hats days. Yes. Um, but all in all, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Yes. And um, again, you know, it's just good to be here. Definitely. Um, tonight to really just have fun. You know, yes. here we we you know we um we believe in really just having uh, the conversation. You know. Yes. And tonight we have a very interesting topic. Yes. That we are going to be sharing, and um, you know, the topic of tonight. You want to tell us what it is? 10 toxic communication uh, habits in relationships. Yeah. That should now, be fun. Now, we know there are many more than 10, but yes. I, I guess these 10, these 10 are probably major ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so me being a divorcee. Wow. Um, uh, <laughs> and having the experience of being married. Yes. Uh, I know what it is to have clashes. As some would say, when tongue and teeth meet, oh you know, Lord. oh yes, or we yeah, have okay. <laughs> excitable conversation. Oh, you yeah. put it. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, it's where exciting. the yes. where the counselors came in in the midst, and you know, we had to talk and see how we do in in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a such. 
and you know we'd have great 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 uh constant session and after yes. the session it's like what happened here we just mm -hmm. learned some skills of, but how how about us put those skills in place to use mm -hmm. that was the hard part you know yeah it's always yeah. it's it's easier said than done you know mm -hmm. it's, it's it's easier to to know that these are the skills but then to implement them that's where the problem is yes yes mm -hmm. so i found that there's several times when we had we 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 would have we'd have a great content session and we'd leave and at the minute we hit the car it's like we forgot all the techniques, you know, <laughs> we learned. Yeah, okay. Okay. You listen first and I, I would, I would talk and then I'll listen and you can speak that went through the door. Like, yeah, definitely. Here, you know, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and then the blame game comes in and the words, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's fascinating, but yeah, yeah at least it gives you a sense of, you know, perspective. Yes. Um, you can relate to someone else who said, yeah, I've been there, done that. Yes. You know, and um, you learn from it, you know, and grow from it. Well, we hope to learn from it because experiences yeah. teaches wisdom. So we yes. hope to learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. By the way, I like your headphones tonight. They look, they look, they look really cool tonight. They look, Thank you. Kinda, They're shining. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're shining. I'm I looking like at that. your headphones also. Look nice and comfortable. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I see, <laughs> as the mic in there, I think I'm going to get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So we're here. And again, we are just thankful. Thankful for being here. Definitely. Yes. So thanks for joining us for Let's Talk Relationships on You Me Radio. Here we explore the dynamics and evolution of relationships, identify challenges, and offer perspectives through transformative conversations. We are here to promote strong, healthy family life and the community. It is important to us that you know that it is not our intention to offer opinions or advice on how you should live on how you should live your personal life or how your personal relationship should be. Do your own research. Be a free thinker. Make sure you are doing well in your own life as well and know that we wish you love and happiness yes as as well look forward to a, a, a great show yes we want to say a big thank you a big 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 thank you to all our partners supporters listeners all over the world you know yes. right now we're in over 116 countries yes and growing yes um so you know we i see some folks uh, reaching out mm -hmm. already mr brownie uh-huh. All right. Yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I tell you, she's always, always here mm -hmm. to, uh, to join and, 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 and share and take part in our discussions. Yes. Very, very uplifting. So, you know, we know you could, you know, you could be in so many other places and, and spaces right now, but you, you have chosen to spend time with us here and LTR. We value your time. You know, we really do. So we'll jump right into our main topic yes. after sharing a few reminders. Um, again, like I said, well, welcome to our show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have... I am Gloria. Yes. <laughs> and this is, uh, as you know, DJ K-T-E. Yes. That's me. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, just again, have a good time. The time right now is 9 o'clock. To be exact, 908. 908. 908. And the date is October 11th, yes. 2021. Yes. And uh, we're about to make it happen tonight. Yes. So all you YouTube tribes out there, get your questions, get your uh, your uh, your popcorn and your drinks and your stuff. We're going to go for a nice train ride tonight. All yes. Right? Get ready for this conversation. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So to listen or watch this and other episodes later, you can also listen to You Me Radio on all major digital platforms, including via our, via our app at app.youmeradio.com, which is available on Apple or Google app stores, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google, Podbeam, TuneU, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Listen notes. Yes. All right. All right. So before we get to a topic, um, we'd like to share uh, just an amazing you know, fan. Uh, really, really just amazing person. 
and um, a member and a returning guest. Um, her name is Apostle Dr. Fate Walters, and here is her spotlight. I am inviting you to my um, celebration that will be held at the um, Gideon Putnam in Saratoga Springs, New York. So I'm hoping that, you know, uh, people allow the Lord to, to move on you, to come, open up the door, uh, to provide the finances. All you're responsible for is to travel and hotel accommodations. And it's a weekend getaway. And I, I was promised to be a very epic, epic event. So I'm just praying and believing God that more you will, God will move in your heart for you to be a part of this great move and just celebration of what God has done in my life and how he has blessed me through so many years, you know, and to bring me to this point, you know, so I'm truly grateful, you know, so uh, those that know me, I love to worship God in the first segment because I cannot have any celebration without giving God the glory. So we're going to have fun. We're going to have food. We're going to have just wonderful fellowship and just just rejoice in the in, in, in the evening. And, you know, Friday, it begins on Friday, uh, 6 to 10 p.m. And then Saturday, it's a spa or mineral bath. And that's from 9 to 12 in the Saturday morning and Saturday evening. It's a gala event, which is all white or off-white. You know, on the Fridays, you wear a touch of red. And on Sunday morning, we get up for breakfast. Breakfast is between 7 and 10 a.m. And we will have uh, another time of fellowship and to reflect. We're going to have some more games. You know, I'm going to have little, little different things. We're going to have a lot of music, of course. You know, and just celebrating Jesus, dancing and just having a good time. And when we come out, we're still saved, you know. So I'm just grateful to the Lord, you know, they allowed me this time. And I will continue to celebrate because God is so good to me. He's been an awesome God in my life. And he's been an anchor that keeps my soul and he has held me through so much pain, you know, and he has got me through so much in my life. So every chance I get, every year I do something to let him know how wonderful he is and how much I'm grateful for life, you know. And I also do it to encourage others to don't take your birthdays for granted, your year of your birth, you know, the day of your birth, you know, yeah, Job cursed his birth, the day of his birth because of his dilemma. But even though I had my dilemmas, I was rejoicing. And not only that, I'm going to be, you know, giving out some, I was like, to, even when I was on my job, I used to, the day before I did my celebration, I used to give out, get some cake, bring it to work and just give it out to people in honor of my birthday. So I, I do silly things for my birthday because I just feel people need to celebrate life. And you got so much people dying around here, you know, and, and one of the reasons why I put it at Saratoga Springs, sometimes you need to get away and drive, go a little further. Don't just stay in the same community doing the same things. Come out of your comfort zone, you know, and go beyond. Take Don't, don't forget to take a leap of faith. You know, stop being afraid to travel out. Take the train, take the bus, whatever you got to do. Just get there, you know. And, and just be a part of the fellowship, you know, and just be do something different. Be spontaneous in the moment, you know. It's not just all about me. It's just to also, because I'm taking care of all the expenses. You just really just take care of the hotel and your travel. That's all you're doing, you know. And it's just a time of fun. And it, you you also got to to make reservations for your spa. That's, your, that's up to you if you want to do that. Or, you, you know, you spend time, uh, you know, just... Be in the area because uh, Gideon Putnam uh, is a beautiful resort. Oh my God, it is so quiet and serene. I'm just encouraging you just to you know come and share in the moment with me, and you, I trust you will have a wonderful time. So God bless you and thank you again, and I hope I see you there. And send me a text if you have my information. Send me a text. Of course, you have the numbers nine one four. 
um, 837-9635 or 914-699-2482. Uh, or send me an email that you would like to come at Ministries at gmail.com. All right. Ah, see, Ali, I know there's something, something about this lady here. Hmm? Because I've been on one of her events. Okay. Her day and tell you, she's uh, full, just full of life. Mm. Oh, she's energetic. She's enthusiastic. I mean, she's like a firecracker. Mm. You know, I mean, she's like a party by herself. <laughs> um, but I, I really loved loved um, um, her, her events. Yes, and she's right. This, you know, she really believes in this. You know, celebrating life and really, mm -hmm. you know, taking time off for me for you. Yes, because sometimes we work. You know, for the kids, for the job, we spend time in building our own career or business. Um, and we miss out those me moments that that it was that needs some time to be refreshed and you know mm -hmm. renewed in that sense of the word, um, so we can get back to our business, um, you know, in, in life. Hey, Lady Misty. Hey. <laughs> we miss you, Lady Misty. She's always there with us, you know, just checking in and making sure that we're doing the right thing. Otherwise, she spank yes. us, right, Lady Misty. <laughs> We're getting in trouble now. She's uh, she's watching, so we got to keep in shape here. Uh -huh. Don't be too hard on me now. Yeah, make sure we do the right <laughs> thing, right, that, right, Lady Misty. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> yes, right. yes. So we thank God for Doctor Faith. So tonight, yes, Gloria, we we about to um get the party started here. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And the topic that we're exploring tonight is inspired by conversations and even our own relationship experiences, even like what you spoke about at the beginning, even yeah. with your divorce, what you were mm -hmm. able to gain from it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, everybody has experiences where they've had to deal with toxic conversations yeah. in relationships. And also, this, this should be a good show. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. All right. So, um... We 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 know we have this uh I guess this these ten things. Yes, we do. That I think you want to dive into for us and let me give the audience a perspective here what we're gonna build this off. Okay. So mm -hmm. you want to go ahead and read? So yes. <laughs> for ex for, for the topic exposing bad communication habits, we have first of all, what is a toxic conversation? But we have mm -hmm. to know exactly what that is. So it means lying, um, bending the truth, exaggerating something, or leaving out information so that you can take a certain action or have a certain opinion of them. So we have 10 signs of bad communication. And remember, there are more than 10, but we're only you know, focusing on 10 today, or we're only yeah. conversing about 10. Mm -hmm. So we have one is getting defensive. Two is stonewalling each other, which is giving the cold shoulder. Passive aggression, which is three, assuming you know what your partner is thinking without even asking them. Five is a lack of compromise. Six is fewer attempts to connect with each other. Seven is criticizing or belittling each other. Eight is circular arguments that are never resolved. And nine is arguing about the facts behind the conflict instead of focusing on what the experience was like for each other. And the 10th one is selective communication. So I see that persons already have started, you know, talking about it. We have, yeah. you know, toxic con conversations into toxic communities, which is, which is correct. And we see where, um, if it is that, you know, we have any of these things, we'll never be able to have good communication with our partner or whomever it is that we're having this conversation with. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, so, right. So we have a special guest with us tonight. And, uh, you know, we, before even we do that, we want to just continue to invite the viewers to like the video and to comment throughout the show and you know, we thank you so much, our commentators, even oh, yeah. Ms. Brownie. We want um, your engagement, yeah. yeah love, love engagement. Everybody, yes. we, we want your engagement. You know, it's always good to have that in the show and hear your, your perspectives also. Yeah. Right. So, 
even after that, we, we have a, a guest, a special guest that will be joining us. Um, it's for the first time, and his name is Next Change. So he is married, and he's a conversationalist on topics related to relationship. He is also a gospel recording artist. So we're also hearing from his perspective on how this is. Oh, yes, right. so welcome, Next Change. Thank you so much, <laughs> Lady yeah. Missy. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it's not it's not easy taking over from you, but you know, doing my best. She 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 said a real high high bar, didn't she? Like you know, <laughs> <laughs> doing our best. So yeah. we're waiting on on um next change to come. So while we're even waiting on him, you know, yeah. Um, even these these ten things that we have spoken about are listed. We can see how vital it is. Even some some small things, as as in getting defensive over something, or not even hearing your the other person's opinion, or considering how they feel. Those things alone can get can cause toxic communication. Yeah. Some some things that without, without us even realizing it or noticing it. It's true. And you think about it, when it comes to uh, these things, most people sometimes don't know when they are doing it. They don't know, they don't know when they actually are behaving that way. Mm -hmm. Also, I believe that there's, there's a study shows that kids they kind of come to their own personality at around six or seven. They really become set right. for the rest of their lives. And I think when one has grown to an adulthood, Mm -hmm. um, 25, 30, 40, and I've had not done certain things prior to that, certain changes, right. certain, you know, some adjustment in their personality, their attitude, the way about life. It is very, very, almost very hard to even turn that around. Right. And, and sometimes the work that it takes to even try to root it up and replant, so to speak, mm -hmm. seems almost, um, almost impossible or improbable. Um, but but again, it, it, it required that that kind of sense of determination, wanting to please the other person. Right. I think we're in a culture that people are just very selfish. You know, it's a mm -hmm. me 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 culture mm -hmm. where sometimes we don't take the, the the extra step and say, you know what, what can I do? Who can I be so I can have this the other person have a better experience? You know. Right. Right. And many times, folks have been beaten down in their lives themselves that. All they do now is just about survive. They're in a the survival mode. Like, you know, it's really at this point, everything I do is about surviving. Right. And it's an it's an unhealthy way of doing it. But, you know, people do find we call it coping mechanism. Yes. Some go to the bottle. Yes. Some go to alcohol and drugs. Yes. Some some go to different means. Um. So we see the behavior comes in many different ways. Yes. People saying, "I'm protecting me," you know, and. uh it's like I said, it's a lot of broken people. You mm -hmm. know, we talk about trauma all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's really is accountability again. As the the one um, that's one said, it's hard speaking to someone who simply refused to take accountability. Yes, yes, I, I believe that's true. Um, I've been told sign that that I don't take accountability by by other people, and sometimes I, I think I probably don't. And some, sometimes sometimes <laughs> I do. Hands up and both fists in the air. Sometimes I don't. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes I don't really care. Yes. <laughs> what the person saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know. Honest, I don't really don't care. I mean, at the moment, I really don't care what you think. Right. Right. And the other time, you know what? You know, I I care. It's let me rethink this thing. Yes. Let me let me adjust this thing. You know. Yes. I think as as human beings, we're very complex. This time we want to give. This time we want to be selfish. Yes. This time we want to be with a crowd. This time we want to be by ourselves. True. This time we want to scream. This time we want to be silent. True. This time we want to go to church. I yes, hear I'm a with message. Sometimes okay, I want to stay in my bed and just watch my TV. <laughs> I want to watch cartoon. I want to watch Roadrunner and Roger the Rabbit. I don't, you know, I don't want to see nothing serious right now, you know? Uh -huh. So, but I'm known to be one that don't take accountability. Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I'm working on it. I'll be a, <laughs> I'll be a better man. <laughs> and the, the good part is introspection. <laughs> at least you have done introspection. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. now it is that you, you can see where you, you know, you are. Whether yeah. you're wrong in some aspects or oh not. Oh my God, so wrong! I'm like both hands and feet in the air, like good God Almighty! I need help. <laughs> Somebody help me! Yeah. I need two therapies at one time. You know, that's right. And oh, I think I think um, 
we have some challenges here with the uh, maybe Wi-Fi. Not Next sure change. Wh why that's going on? Sometimes these um these things happen. Um, you know, we have technical difficulties. Here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, no, no. I'm hearing a background, but I'm not hearing. Yes. And um, this comment said, I think when people treat you this way, it's simply because they do not value you or what, or what you're saying. Are saying. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is true. Sometimes, sometimes it's a, it's a moment thing. It's not even a um, it's not even a personal thing. And sometimes, you know, when people do things, they don't even know they're doing it. They really don't know. No, they don't. Unless they're told, because the people will say they they'll be very, very open with their feelings, and share it with you. So if you if you haven't heard it all your life. And someone said, "Will you be this way?" It's almost like, "What makes you so special?" Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. are you right? Then everybody was wrong. You know. Hey, night, 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 night. Hey, oh, I think oh, he's we're here. We're hearing him now. <laughs> I'm in a voice. I'm here to see a, see an image now, right? Oh, we can't see the image. Hi. We're hearing. There oh, we go. Yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome, my brother. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Can you see and hear us? Can you can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Can or hear us? No, I'm not hearing anyone. But your I answer. was hearing Gloria <laughs> before, but I, I'm not hearing anyone now. You're not hearing anyone now. Um, you check your um. You check your uh, your microphone or your your headphones, maybe, because that way we can get this rolling here. Mm -hmm. All right. So hopefully. Hopefully he'll be on. He'll be hearing soon. Yes, hopefully he he'll hear soon. Yeah. All right. So there's a there's a few there's a minute or two to have him um on. So until he comes, yes. Yeah, so it's glorious. Yeah. So we we definitely um on a very interesting topic here. Check one two. Check one two. Uh, okay, yes. we're hearing you. Are you hearing us? Oh, we're literally in what to do. So until then, yeah. Um, I think or, we all. Mm -hmm. we or maybe, all, maybe we can probably come out and log back in again, but that may that may work as well. Sometimes if we 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 log in, that helps as well. Yeah. So okay. go ahead, Glory. You were saying. Right. I'm saying. Um, number four on the list, which is assuming you know what your partner is thinking. We also, mm -hmm. many of us, and I do sometimes also expect. You know, uh -huh. in relationships, sometimes we expect the man to know what we're thinking or we expect the woman to know what we're thinking. True. And we often times hear, especially from the men, we we're, we we can't know what you're thinking without you saying it. True. You know, um, yeah. so that alone can also cause problems because of our expectations. Yes. And we don't talk too much sometimes. <laughs> we don't talk much. <laughs> uh, right, and, right. And even men don't talk much. So sometimes yeah. you hear women now start badgering because we want the men to open up and talk. And we're like, open up and talk. And the men True. don't want to talk. And even because sometimes, as I say, men sometimes, they're few, they're, they say few words or a few things. Yeah. So even, even coming from that, even the body language with saying, you know, I don't have anything to talk about can be offensive also. Mm -hmm. Um, as, as Ms. Brownie says, true. And we underestimate the power of language or symbols being man-made. Which yeah. is true, also. That's true. And we underestimate what our body language is when we're speaking to someone. Yeah. Because they can actually know how we feel about a situation and know what, you know, know, know how what is said. Because even here it says um, different words mean different things to different people. And it's true. Yes. I have learned my lesson with that <laughs> <laughs> in terms of. How I feel about something, and I will say something, and mm -hmm. like even with my husband, I will say something to him, and probably he will get offended. And in my mind, why are you being offended by it? It doesn't mean yeah. anything. Uh huh. And then I'll pick up on the body language and realize, okay, there's a problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm picking up on the body language. I'm realizing we have a problem, so let's talk about what this is. Mm -hmm. Um. So it is. What is the problem? What is it that I have said? So when it is that. He explained it to him and said, oh, but that's not what it means for me. So it means two different things. Because an example is as we used to have an argument about what few means. Mm -hmm. The word F-E-W, few. Uh -huh, few uh -huh. And uh, for me, when I say it's a few, a few weeks or a few days, 
it doesn't have for me it's if a few days or a few weeks it's probably like a week two weeks three weeks for me that's a few for him a few only means like two days or or so that's not a few that's not a few to me mm-hmm. so we had problems also with understanding what few meant to yeah. each other mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that small word alone caused a big problem so we had to okay what does your few mean uh, and and take the time out now to figure out okay what does your mean versus what my mean so that we can have a proper understanding of what we're talking about wow you know that, that's a great point one of the things that i learned in, in when i was married there were times I would hear you are passive aggressive. Mm-hmm. Now, my ex-wife is a you know therapist. Mm-hmm. You know that's with background psychology, that kind of thing. And sometimes people tend to psychoanalyze you a lot, you mm-hmm. know, depending on where the, the background and what the background is. But I, when you said passive aggressive, okay, is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? Is that okay? Should I should I be aggressive aggressive? Should I be <laughs> You know what? What is what? I mean, if, okay, I so okay. I'm passive aggressive, so I'm passive aggressive. Mm-hmm. I'm aggressive aggressive. So we got to be something. Mm-hmm. But what made it so interesting was that when I'm trying to be calm, in my mind, I'm saying I'm merely just trying not to be outwardly blasphemous. Right. Just wanna, right. But in her mind, I guess I should be louder and maybe something more aggressive. Mm. To say, well, you're not being passive aggressive. I'm actually just trying to be calm. To become and, right, and many times it, it it's passed on as you've been passive aggressive. You're not really being genuine with, with how you with how you with being. hearing. Like, well, in my mind, I'm just trying to just get to the conversation here. Um, but I'm learn I've learned how not to, to be. Oh, not to be. I would say, not to expect too much from people. Really, or limit our expectations it, with people. Not to expect too much from people. Right. Um, and realize that people do the best they can. Yes. How they think. Yes. It's what they think. Uh, they do. That's important. Yes. And you can't ask so you can't ask for the 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 the, the work of a fork using a spoon. No. A spoon is a spoon. Yes. And so my my so my job is to understand who you are. Yes. I said that's how you are, and I'm going to address you and deal with you that way. Yes. But I don't spend too much time trying to make you fit in no. my mold. No. You know? And then now uh, what we do sometimes that we when, when we don't when we don't get that person that mold of our understanding of what we think is proper or or call it political correct political or correct. Mm-hmm. Wh- whatever you want to call it, then now we say the words coming now. Yes. You're this, you're that, you're we're incompetent. Mm-hmm. We start you're, using you're words. Belligerent. Mm-hmm. You are you are you are incontinent, mm-hmm. you are defensive, you are this, then the names start now. Yeah, like, we start and, belittling. I, and I don't I don't know what um what oh okay, I'll work on it, but sometimes working it don't it doesn't come overnight. Would it be early for you to for you to say, oh, there, there's a change? Because my change may take a year. And True. you may see two, three weeks a month. I'm doing the same thing in a month. They're like this guy's crazy, this lady's crazy, and they're not changing. But it may take a year, it may take five years for it to change properly. I don't know, mm-hmm. but um, I guess it start with accepting. You know, that's your experience. You know, whatever it is, and maybe you can say, apologize. So listen to me. I'm working on it. I'm doing my best, and the the rest will fall in, into its own it place. Fall into place. Yeah, but I mean, I'm seeing the comments when you think they don't understand. You try to understand. I mean, yeah, that's a I great mean, that's a great statement there. It's it's a great statement, and I remember also I had a friend. Um, he also said to me, you can try communicating this particular way so that other people will understand and there is less conflict. He said it may mm. take time, mm. but it works out better. So his 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 method is when someone is saying something to you and they're angry, try and disassociate the anger from what they're saying mm-hmm. for a minute and see what they're saying. If it is that you know, want to try and understand what they're saying so that you can know respond accordingly so you're according you're you're responding to what they're upset about and mm-hmm. not the body language that you're seeing wow so when you know respond to what they are actually saying you ask them is this what you're trying to say so instead of just responding you repeat it yeah. so that you can they can hear how you are hearing it because oftentimes 
people are hearing what you're saying but not listening to what you're saying. So we respond right. to people who we, we respond to what we're hearing, not what we listen to. Mm -hmm. And and that oftentimes causes problems. So what we do know is he said, listen to what it, what they're saying, and then you repeat it to them. And then if they say, yes, that's what I said, or no, that's not what I meant, then there can be explanations from that. Yeah. But if it is that we continue to react based on what we are seeing, which is their body language or the tone of voice that they're using, because that also causes problems, or how they're saying things, that can cause a problem. So even though the listening and then um, asking questions, so we have, we have to learn to always ask questions. So we ask questions. Is this what you are saying? Is this what you meant? Because sometimes, as it was said before, persons sometimes say things not necessarily meaning something bad, but we're mm -hmm. taking it in a particular way because of how we view it. Mm -hmm. So to cause less arguments or disagreements, we can always ask questions. Yes, and you know, that's a great point, um, very great point. And something I learned in one of uh, the therapy sessions that I had, and the therapist said that sometimes a person hears to their dad, mm -hmm. they hear to their mom, they hear to an experience, they hear. And so, therefore, when they hear, they almost don't even hear for themselves. They hear through the pain. Mm -hmm. They hear it through a, a moment. And, and so it, it kind of it becomes an impediment. You, and then you have another angle of it where someone think they hear and understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like if you say to me, for instance, Keith, give me the red pen. Mm -hmm. I didn't feeling to ask you, what did you say? Did you say the red pen? I heard the red pen. Mm -hmm. So I don't ask you exactly what you're trying to say. I heard you. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you might have said blue. So True. I want to ask you, if not, I heard a red. So Matthew, oh, well, it wasn't red. You know? So it needs, again, there are folks who have the gift to us. They have patience. Yes. Some folks don't have that, that gift. Oh, you're speaking to they me. They really don't. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of it now is that there is a method, a methodology of how you can speak. In fact, speaking, many, many, many people have not learned that. Yes. Because I, what you said a while ago, it's, it's like a skill set. Like, okay, someone say something to me, I'm going I'm to revert back to what they said and have mm -hmm. them, you know, and have me, you know, kind of confirm that. Is that what you're saying? Yes. But that's a whole different, that's a whole different technique. When you have an issue where an, it's a, it's a fast paced thing. You, you, you're anxious. You may be upset. You know, you're coming at me a certain way. I come at you a certain way. It's not a time space to you know, ask to, questions. Yeah, questions. Who you, really stops? Like, you, 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 you sound, in fact, you may sound, you may probably exacerbate, exacerbate it's a certain, conflict mm, yes. even more. But because I, I, I'm t sometimes I'm, the, the people, if you try to be that way, they, they go, they lose their mind. <laughs> they will lose their mind. Like, okay, you know what? They, See you next week. You know what I'm saying? Because but, but we deflated the conflict, didn't we? They, they because exactly. instead of seeing the hands going and whatever, <laughs> we're deflating the conflict by, by yeah. saying, What did you mean by that? I think yeah. we're afraid to ask questions, yeah. and we're we're and I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of it. <laughs> so when I hear voices raised and when I see hands going wow. <laughs> and it's a different when I see tones or hear tone. Yeah. It's a different ball game that we're on. <laughs> so yes. I have to I have to consciously say to myself, hey, all right, forget about the tone. Let's let's figure this out or take a breath because yeah. not everything we have to respond to. Mm -hmm. And that is that's a problem also in relationships. We don't know when to respond and when not to. We don't oh, know how to fight that's our a critical one. That. You know, I tell you, it, I've done two, I've done two jobs in my lifetime. And they were both, they, they both place a big emphasis on this de-escalating conflicts. Mm -hmm. You know, with dealing with young men, a lot of these young men, they were, you know, they had misdemeanors, they had they probably went to jail once or twice, you know, broken homes, angry boys, you know, okay. fatherless. And and so therefore you put all them in this this one place. Mm -hmm. 15 to 20 boys, you know, who have who, who are having issues. And say, well, you're alone working with these boys, and if there's any conflict here, that be this they escalate the conflict. Mm -hmm. Only in one room, four guys in one room from different parts of the, of the, the city, you know, with their own issues, 
they don't have their own space. They're told when to go to the bathroom, when to go to school, when to do this, when to eat, when to watch TV. It can be very stressful, right? Yes, it can. They can't leave when they want to leave and go off ground. They can't do what they want to do when, when they, and when, like we can, like staff, and go out and do our thing. They're pretty much stuck at this facility here. Mm -hmm. So there are many times when there's conflict, I have to jump in there, find a way to uh, cause this de-escalation to happen. Mm -hmm. So I guess a big part of my thing is to always be, be calm. Like, you know, are you really care about what's going on here? But when I hear that that intense thing happen, mm -hmm. I, just, I become very calm. Mm. Almost like disengaged, but I guess it's a part of my training. But I'm okay. there, yeah. So either so much can happen when you um, when you, when you're um, when you're dealing with the with uh, relationships and communication mm -hmm. and addressing the conflicts. Yes, the, 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 those different dynamics. This show is about really, hopefully, inspiring the listener to say, you know what, maybe I can make a slight change. Yes. Sometimes it may not be big giant steps. Mm -hmm. It's also small little changes that you make mm -hmm. over time. Yes. That blossoms into something that's beautiful. Yes. You know? And um, yeah, it's but but I definitely hear you. I definitely hear you out, Gloria. Um, when you talk about uh, you know, being guilty of not able to, you know, flow that way to get the best mm -hmm. outcome. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. So it's 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 pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. So we're gonna see if we can, you know, talk. Look, look at some of the YouTube comments that we're seeing, and we're continuing to invite viewers to like the video and comment, you know, throughout mm. the show. And we want to thank again our commentators for being involved. Yeah, yeah. As Ronnie says, um, saying nothing sometimes is the best response, and I agree. Oh yes. Oh my goodness. I agree that with is, that. That is so on point. Yes. Yes. <sighs> so <laughs> let me tell you, it's. <laughs> Oh gosh! Give so, me one of your give me one of your crazy moments when you when you were like, "What was I thinking?" Oh my one goodness! Crazy moments, are Gloria. So what I remember is, all right. So there are two there's two situations, um, and one of the situations is with my ex husband. Mm -hmm. He would do things so that I respond because he knows uh, triggers. Huh? I can Trigger. be a I can be. <laughs> A firecracker. <laughs> so uh -oh. <laughs> he does things because he knows I'm going to respond. Uh -huh. And I remember one day I responded and it was nothing Christian that I responded about. Watch it nothing now. Christian. Watch it now. So I'm just, we're just I being wonder open. What, I wonder what that was. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing Christian that I responded about. <laughs> and um, he said to me, why are you responding? Aren't you a Christian? And I was like, whoa, you know, he's correct. <laughs> but for me, when persons are aggravating you so that you can respond, the best thing is to not respond. It's hard, yeah. but it's also called self-control. Yeah. So when it is now that he was doing things, as I reach home and I'm happy he will say things and it will want to upset me. Uh -huh. And I will remember, <laughs> I'll remember my counselor at the time saying to me, you don't need to respond to everything he's saying. If he wants to say something, it's probably not you he's talking to. Mm. And if he's saying something that is demeaning, it's not you he's talking to. So ignore it. Why are you responding to something? If you're responding, it means that you're you're agreeing with what they're saying. Mm. So you don't. Okay. So at a point, I learned to not respond. Okay. And I, after a while, I did not respond. Then he started coming around and stopped doing what he was doing. Okay. Oh, okay. So okay. I had I had to learn, and the, the, the part of this is as a counselor, I was able to tell other people and other couples to not do this. But for my relationship, I was responding, see. Because mm -hmm. okay. just like our daughter cannot help their own relatives, a counselor cannot help themselves. <laughs> you know what? You, you you got it, you got a point. Because I've always wondered about a lot of these uh Therapist. No, nope, can't help this. They seem to be so out of whack. Like, my goodness, you have all the answers. Why don't you just think? <laughs> so we can't help life. ourselves. When you're, in this, <laughs> when you're in this situation, it's totally different. But I've yeah. learned that I've, I've, I've just really learned that not answering mm -hmm. sometimes helps them to change. Just true. I'm that not saying true. all the time, mm -hmm. but it does. I've also been at workplaces where things have happened and I have responded. 
Mm. I've responded without caring, without feeling, without anything, because this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. And it was sometimes always about how I feel. And as it says here, sometimes we argue about the facts behind a conflict instead of focusing on what the experience was like for the other person. Mm -hmm. person. So I had to learn that, hey, I felt a way about something, but Mm -hmm. the person also felt a way. Let us talk about how each of us felt about it. And wow. let's apologize and come to an agreement. But the, the honest truth is, it's not easy to do. It yeah. has to, as 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 I always say to people, sometimes we have to kill flesh. We have to learn to kill flesh mm-hmm. and not respond. It's not easy, but we have to do so. Yeah. You know, I think, um, I, and I heard someone mention this, that whatever person is and whether, wherever they are, they're being authentic. Yes. You know, we talk about the, the some of the lists that people are, we call it they are defensive, they may sideswipe the conversation, they may be may stonewall. Mm-hmm. Um, some say gaslight. I'm just trying mm-hmm. to figure what that is. I'm all thinking cursing light, gaslight, and mm-hmm. different kind of lights, you know, flashlight. Mm-hmm. I recite. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out, but I'll I'll figure it out one day. Um and again, it it, it shows you how deep. You know, I think that a lot of what we feel, even even now with black black people, is coming from so far. Yes, it is. So far, that 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 the anger and the, and the depth of hurt and pain that has run through the black vein, the black blood, so to speak. Right. I think there's some effect of it that we experience now. Um, and a lot of it's, it's unspeakable. It's unspeakable. We don't. We can't find words. It's just not. It's just there. Mm-hmm. Um. And there's a, there's a sense of self-hate, you know? And so we become very keen and sensitive to all these things. And to grow, we, as we know, it, it is somewhat painful. Yes. You know, it takes that intentional thinking that, you know what, I want to be better. Yes. The, the prodigal son, you know, as a good book say, one day told his father, listen to me, I want to leave Give it, give him my stuff. Let me go and live my life. Mm-hmm. You know, he had, you know, father had his had his money put away and his riches put away, and so he grabbed what he could and and he went away and lived lived his life. Mm-hmm. But there was a point when he realized, after his experiences, mm-hmm. that you know it's not what he thought or expected it to be. Mm. And the key word in the story was this: he came to himself. Yes. Self-realization, yes, um, and acknowledge where he was, and said, "I'm going to go back to my father." Yes, the decision, and of course, humility, of course, mm-hmm. played a big part in that. He went, he left as a son, and went back more with a servant mentality. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, and and these are things that were so um, so critical for his restoration. Yes. Of course, his father threw him a party. Yes. You know, so so his brother back. got jealous because mm-hmm. he was like, I didn't leave the home. And he right. Left. But he showed the heart, the spirit the of heart. a person mm-hmm. can take him to the lowest and at and, and the same time take him to the highest. Highest. Level. So very true. It, it's a very it's a very serious topic. Um, um toxic communication. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a very strong word. When we say toxic, because yes. the people who actually deliberately say things toxically, I mean they really don't even care. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have the minor conflicts, and then you have the ones where people, I would say, under they, they don't give it the, I would say, the respect it, 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 it's due, you yes. know. Mm-hmm. And then some people kind of uh subjugate your thing less than what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, some kind of demean it, you know, it's yes. not important, you know, younger yes. voice, yes, and. You know, it's just so much dynamics in this that that um I, I encourage those people who are maybe having these kind of issues. Yes. You know, for those who are not um who have seen a counselor, um to definitely look at that aspect. Definitely. Of it, you know, to kind of hear each other. Yes. You know. Check one, two, objectively. audio check. Oh, I think he's here. Can oh. you hear us? So can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yes, it might be something with his with his device. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Something with his device. Yes, I'm hearing them. Yes. Oh, you're hearing us? 
Great. Can you hear us? Or maybe he has the delay on. You hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Are you hearing us? He's not hearing us. Maybe there's a delay. There could be a delay, yeah. Mm. We're we're going on to um you know how selective communication hurts your relationship. Mm -hmm. And Are we know that we are hearing you. But we're not sure if you're hearing us. We're not sure at all. Yeah, we, we're definitely hearing you. Yeah, he's having some really um, right. issues there. So it says selective communication is one of the most painful experiences in a relationship, especially within a legal union. True. Toxic friendships are all too common. 84% of women and 70% of men report having a toxic friend at some point. Toxic relationships equal toxic conversations. Mm -hmm. And we have some pointers. They're not limited to, but they're just some pointers where persons are toxic. You're hearing mm -hmm. us next change? No, I don't think he's hearing us. Okay. So we have some pointers, which is not sharing much about our past for fear of rejection or embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Not sharing things that our extended family is going through. Not sharing finances. Yeah. Past relationships, sending finances to other family members, and the sex was not great. Mm. So those were some of the things that we saw um, online when we're looking up some of the, the, the conversations that will bring toxicity to a relationship or a conversation. Yeah. And what struck me is that many times couples don't share finances. And one person thinks that the other person is hiding money from an individual. Yeah. You know? Yes. And <laughs> that causes a big problem yeah. um, in any relationship. And communication... With, with talking about finances now becomes a big problem in communication because nobody wants to say, okay, I have this savings or I have that money because why do you want to know how much money I have? Mm. It's my money. Or if it is that I want to send money to my family, why should I tell you? Uh, why should you know? I mean, we're married, but do you have to know? Those are some of the <laughs> questions um, that I see that persons are asking. Also, is the sex great? So after sex, are we going to talk about it if it wasn't great? Should I tell you that it wasn't good? I mean, you were thinking that it was good, but at the end of the day, I was thinking about work. So yeah, should I tell you? Should I not tell you? So mm -hmm. should I, you know, so questions like that. And even um, not sharing our past because if we share our past, we don't know if everyone is going to accept us for who we are. Mm -hmm. So we prefer, we prefer to not let people know about our past and what happened because we don't want, a, we don't want an argument coming up and our mm -hmm. past is being brought into that argument because that also could lead to resentment and bitterness. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, you had some very, very important um, point there. Uh, the one day viewer said, wow, I think I, it also includes business conversation, too. Mm -hmm. it, it, it certainly does. Um, I think that uh, I think that too many relationships, and I've seen those who started out, especially in the church, mm -hmm. and they didn't really discuss some things prior that they should have asked. And mm -hmm. we had a show recently where we had, um, it was really about asking it's about asking all these questions. Mm -hmm. I think it was a hundred and hundred and think uh, fifteen questions, I believe. I don't remember exactly, but it was a lot of questions that we, we, we tend to kind of go through okay on the show. Um, different stages of relationship, you know, from friends to you know dating mm -hmm. to marriage and that kind of thing. And and I think that that was it was an eye opener. And in fact, it was wonderful, pretty well watched and 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 um and responded to shows. Okay. But too many people, they do not ask certain important questions prior to getting deeper into a relationship. Like oh, they don't. Um, and, and sad to say, you know, folks, it's bad enough that folks go to their own changes, 
when you're 30, when you're 35, when you're 40, you go to your own change, just, just as a human being. So I've walked into something where you haven't even discussed some of those really important things that affect you, like the sex or money. Mm-hmm. Those are like two of the top ones. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you handle the money? I mean, um, and so, and then when you do bump up, bump, on, bump up into the issue, how do you address it? Sometimes it's too combative. So when you deal with adults, they have the right to be an adult. Yes. They have a right to do and say what they don't want to say. And so therefore it takes careful, a careful approach when you have engaged prior. Mm-hmm. Right? So now we didn't discuss it now, and I'm seeing this now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? How do I address that? So you so the person won't feel as if I'm being too um evasive and mm-hmm. too, you know, abrasive. Mm-hmm. And they can maybe welcome the conversation. That also is important. Uh so a lot of folks act surprised when they have not discussed it before. You know? Yeah. Is it is it because um I don't know. Is it because they don't feel or they don't think that it's important to? Because I mean, even talking about things that are happening with your family, you know, for people, say say something is happening with someone's family. Is are they obligated to share it with their partner? You know, some people say no because it's their family. Some people say yes because anything happened to their family also affects their mm. spouse because the spouse is now a part of the family. Yes. Um. So yeah. I mean, each individual also have a different idea of what should be spoken mm. about and whatnot. But I think before getting deeper into marriage, the courtship process should be dealt on. Let's talk about these issues. These are some problems that we need to speak about before mm-hmm. we even before we even go further. Yeah. I mean, an, an example would be this: a, a, a married someone we didn't discuss a particular thing. Mm-hmm. I can now see the person. You know what, honey? Uh, I know we didn't just talk about it before, and we probably should have. But now that this it has come up, mm-hmm. I think that um we should have a discussion about it. You know, just so that we can be on the same page, mm-hmm. that we can connect, and you know, it can become. Oh, I mean, rather being the divisive issue, mm-hmm. we can we can we can you know become the negotiation. We can have understanding that that you know you, you love your family. Mm-hmm. I love my family. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure. You know, if they're in need, you know, we both want to help our families. Yes. But how can we do it in a way where, you know, it doesn't conflict, you know, our own purpose? You know, mm-hmm. if we save for a house, you know, your family needs some money because they have an emergency, but we're trying to get a house and a family mm-hmm. together. Then so what's important? We, right. So how do we approach that? How so do we go from there? The, I always say life is going to happen. Things are going to happen. So a lot of what Christ did was how do you handle it now when it happens mm-hmm. you know where is the love walk where is the understanding walk where is the patient walk where is the long suffering walk where is the gentleness walk where is the meekness walk mm-hmm. where is mm-hmm. the temperance walk because things are going to happen and so it brings things out of you and how are you going to now mm-hmm. relate to those things to to have an, a good or the best outcome you know mm-hmm. so that's all my mind goes there when i hear when i when i hear about People are, are, are when I see that people don't prepare initially before they get into these deep, long term relationships. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna you know look at what persons are seeing in the comment section. I saw some persons writing some very interesting hmm. um, yeah, statements. What happened when you are speaking to someone about something? They do not address that, but start a whole new conversation of their own. It means they're basically really ignoring what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I think I think I've done it probably many times. And I think I think many times to um it was done without knowing. Mm-hmm. Because you see, you know, they no, it's funny because you see what you see, I learned something about women that's so so interesting. Mm-hmm. I think women are better listeners than men in general. Mm-hmm. Better listeners than men. Mm-hmm. Probably much better too. Mm-hmm. And they also retain things better than men. They remember things somewhat better than men. I think they do. I really do. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes I find in the conversations, in my experience, I realize that there's a, sometimes the memory issue is not as good. 
So um, you hear the person and you're not remembering what you need to even to address. Mm-hmm. So like, how do, how do I address what I don't remember? So I, you find, you find, I find myself cutting into someone's conversation mm-hmm. to make sure I get bit by bit. More like the wrong approach. Mm-hmm. But by bit by bit, how do I get this conversation right? Mm-hmm. And and then of course that that can be you know sort of the person put off or turn off you know or uh, more of a, a negative than a positive you know what I mean right right yeah right is he hearing us are you hearing us now can you hear us now yeah I can hear you guys wow okay. <laughs> all right well yes oh yes. yes. finally here we go <laughs> uh, yes I I missed out on a lot but I heard a few things yes you know (laughs) well well you know we 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 did give an introduction and um we can probably just maybe share a little more before we get hear your um your thoughts right so as you as you heard before we're we're talking about um you know toxic 10 toxic things or 10 toxic things that people doing in in relationship or conversations basically and we're talking about, you know, not sharing. The, the aspect that we're at now is when we are not sharing certain things or certain aspects of our lives because we don't want to be embarrassed um, of it or we don't want to be rejected of it or we don't want to hurt our partner's feelings. But in turn of not having a proper conversation with them, we're hurting them. So we touched on like some of the topic of not sharing finances, like not sharing how much money we have in our bank accounts to our partners. Because everybody's view is different. And I think those things should be spoken about prior to marriage or prior to getting mm-hmm. into a serious relationship. Are we going to be able to do this? Things like even, do we want kids? Um, and how many kids? How mm-hmm. many kids do we want? <laughs> are you planning to migrate? Are you not planning to migrate? Um, the religious, are you, are you ever thinking of changing your religious beliefs or not? Things like that. So, yeah. That's some of the pointers. And even for the fear of embarrassment, we don't want to tell people how many persons we have been with in the past. Or we don't want to tell somebody that, you know, I got locked up. There was a time Mm -hmm. I got (laughs) locked up or there's a time I stole something. Yeah. Because we don't want them to know, judge us and say, okay, I don't want to be with you because you did that. But it is important because we have even situations where women get married to men knowing that they cannot get pregnant. True. And (laughs) that is something that should never happen because the partner should know that you're not able to get pregnant. And I've met persons already who don't want to tell the partner um, that even they're not virgins because the partner wouldn't want to be with them. Mm. Or even to say, listen, I am, I'm I'm not able to have kids or they're not able to have kids because, hey, (laughs) <laughs> so and so reason it might be health reason it might be situations where they have done abortions before and it has caused harm on their body it can be so many reasons uh-huh. so these are some of the things that we're talking about so now when it's brought up in our in a marriage in a union it causes problems because why didn't i know this before why didn't you tell me this before right. so we got, we got right. married now on false belief mm-hmm. yeah and it happened quite a bit mm-hmm. what's your two cents mr in exchange <laughs> Well, um, for me personally, I, um, some things need to be unsaid, which there, and I believe that some things need to, you, you need to say some things. You want to be more specific about those um, things? Especially like past relationships, you know, mm-hmm. I, I personally believe that, you know, if, if you're starting a new chapter with someone, you should be at a place where those things should even matter, matter any at all. It should be, it's just you and me because it's you and me in a relationship. You know, okay. all, all things have passed away. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, it is us now and we, we are creating our own story. We are writing our, our own book. If if I should bring up the past, I believe that that what happened in the past, I am stapling it on this new story that I want to write, you know. So I personally don't believe that I should share what 
ever happened in the past with um, where whosoever I've been with back then. Um, two for me, I believe, um, yeah, you're supposed to can discuss your finances. I mean, if you're if you if it's only two dollars you have, it's just two dollars you have. But sometimes it it reach at a place where the person don't believe that you just have two dollars. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't trust you, huh? Mm-hmm. You're not trusted. <laughs> How much yeah. you really have, brother? How much you really have in that yeah, bank? <laughs> so, so, so even so even if you give them the bank card or you you send them to an ATM machine to withdraw some money and they see the balance, they, they still don't believe. You know, and there is nothing you can do or say. You just have to know that, okay, I know that I am telling you the truth, you know, and you just have to leave it there, mm-hmm. you know. So, I mean, I believe that for relationship, you should be as crystal as possible. Um, but sometimes when you be too clear. crystal, Crystal clear, it costs a lot of trouble. You know? Avio, 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 Avio said, but isn't it better to be open and honest and lose, and the, lose wrong the wrong person. person so that you can find the right person? That Alyssa is coming well, in that. Well, yes, that's 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 true. That's true. You know, because if you're being open and honest and you can share everything with one person and whenever there is an argument, they don't take whatever you share with them and throw in your face. <laughs> you know, then, 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 then that person is a keeper. But when you're with someone who you share everything with, and then ever, whenever you have a, there's a little disagreement, they start to dig up your past and start to throw it in your face. First thing, um, that's when I believe the relationships start to go downhill. Mm-hmm. You know. Because I mean, throwing things in someone's face, the person is gonna start to stay quiet. And mm-hmm. whenever, whenever the person start to stay quiet, then that's where the troubles, the troubles start. So be you know, quiet causes you, problems. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have this weird philosophy, right? Yeah. That if you're with someone, you're with you're with another human being, mm-hmm. yeah, who's very flawed. Yes. And very broken. And the yeah. thing that I learned in my experience, being married, that's why even now I can I can do anything for my wife, my ex-wife, yeah. in terms of just she have a need. If I'm available, I'm there. Yeah. I don't even though there are moments I'm like, it could have gone that way. She made a decision as a as an adult yeah. for her own well-being that she thought, right? I have to respect that. I mean, I liked it. I liked it, but she did it because she felt that's what she where she was at in her life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't hold it against her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I think people have issues because they're they're concerned with, with the out the outside element opposed to the inside element. Yeah. So I'm- in other words, it may become a day where a person may does not like you. It could be your own brother. It could be your mother. It could be whatever your friend. So when you when you walk in the understanding, is is another part of life where you just deal with it and and move on. Yeah. Is it and so, so easy? So I'm, I'm learning that more and more because people can surprise you. I mean, the best in us can be like, what happened here? You know, <laughs> and that oh, and, and, and DJ mm-hmm. KTE. That's why people don't want to talk. There is something yeah. that um, Next Change had said, but even before that, I want to just thank you so much for your effort. Next Change, you never yes. gave up. Your yes, oh yes, yeah. I got that one. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> My goodness, a true thank champion, you. man. Yeah, so true much. champion. <laughs> Very consistent. You know, you know yeah. I, I, I always yeah. believe in people talking, learn from each other. You yeah. Know, so. Whenever there is an interested conversation, yeah, yes, I, I definitely want to be a part of it. <laughs> yes. you know? The the question I have though, next change is first yes. of all, we had we had someone commenting and asked if you can handle the truth. But before you even answer that question, yes. suppose your past relationships affects your future relationship in terms of and I'm agreeing with you to some aspects because yes. I also personally 
don't agree that I need to give every detail or yeah. talk about everything in right. a past relationship. If it is if it is that I don't think or I don't believe, it, it's going to influence or have an effect on my marriage or my future relationship. I really don't see why I need to speak about it. Yeah. Um, what, we have things where people have suffered mentally from past relationships and take it into their future relationships. True, and it true. is something that they need to speak about. Um, and it's also, there can also be situations where you know, have an ex who is a stalker. Now your wife or your the person who you're with now is saying, who is that person all of a sudden? I never heard about this person mm -hmm. yet. And this person is now sending you a message or whatever. And if it is that you had said, you know, so-and-so person is my ex, probably an argument could have, you know, mm -hmm. there probably wouldn't be an argument because this person already know who these, per who these people were to me. Or yeah, art to okay. me. I'm not saying definitely go into detail that hey, we went out to this coffee shop and drank something, <laughs> or you know, or we had so and so arguments, things like that don't need to happen. But suppose your past relationship affects your future relationship, would you then feel comfortable speaking about it? Um if the person is willing to um sit, listen try to understand then fine because mm -hmm. sometimes you try to sit with your partner explain certain situation and when you think that your partner would give you maybe a word of encouragement or you know you both can sit down and find a solution to fix the problem it become a bigger problem you know with your partner because your partner start to assume all hey. sorts of stuff. What well, we spoke about yeah. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that, 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 that's the key thing of it. Because by the end of the day, you know, most of the time, you want to share stuff. But sometimes when you sit down and you pencil it out in your brain, you're saying to yourself, it don't make sense. I say it because if I say it, then her thoughts start to go up the hill, down the hill, and around the road, and then she forget that we were talking about, say, for instance, we were talking about the, the fan. Mm -hmm. and her thoughts now start to bring her that we move from the fan to the TV, and the TV to the bed, and the bed to the chest of drawers. So all these things now <laughs> start to become a problem, and we lose focus of the fan, and it become a big argument when we could just simply talk about the fan and find the solution for the fun okay i get you and, and and you know you know too i think that um a lot of people they want to know the person's past because they want to, they want to do a comparison and sometimes that's, they feel insecure yeah, about that's, that's themselves true. yeah and and also too what's make it dangerous too because i learned a lesson some so long time ago i learned this lesson and i said let me just learn from that much 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 younger i was in my 20s and you know of course young men in church and those young ladies that i was you know we were conversing we weren't dating yet, but we're just talking. And I asked her, you know, I said, uh, you know, what's the longest you gave her a kiss before? Yeah. In my little mind, I had no idea. She was going to see what she said. And my friend, she said to me over an hour and a half straight. I said, are you kidding me? I didn't thought that was possible. She kissed a guy over an hour and a half. I said, I can't mess with you. I'm going to yeah. leave you alone. That's right. Because whatever kiss that was, yeah. whatever that was <laughs> I'm not going to try, not gonna try to pass, try to be that record. Yeah. Because you know, now here's the part that's so interesting about that is that she might have changed and converted and okay, and you know, and and that's not important to her anymore. Yeah, you're right. You know, yeah. you're right. But in my mind, no, I, I took it on. And oh my God, and Jesus, you know. And that's why we don't share our past. That's why people don't share so, their past. So, so that's where it gets you when you say, Glory, when you say what you said. That's why at that point was a very good point in how we share yes. our past. So mm -hmm. I think what we should do is say, Listen to me, how do you feel about sharing your past? Let them give the open door. I posted, Have you done that, this? That's have a you done good, that? that? that Who are is, you with? I like you know? that. I like that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a great point that you made. It's better mm -hmm. to, to ask somebody, do you mind sharing about your past? Because mm -hmm. asking that to, to somebody can also look invasive. What are you trying to do? Yeah. Especially if that person um, is sensitive or has blocks up. 
and yes. doesn't want to really talk about things, especially when they have been hurt before. Yes. So addressing them by saying, hey, do you do you feel free or do you feel okay to share things yes. about your past? You can you can do it. Let's 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 do baby steps and see because sometimes when it is that we actually feel comfortable with it, we do want to share. Yeah. But if that person is not giving us the leeway to trust them mm -hmm. and to open up to them little by little, and it's it's as if we're being forced to oh, we need to share everything right now before we get married. I mean, it's not possible. There are things that we need to talk about and share with each other. But it's not possible to share everything. And there are just some things that people will never know about you. <laughs> yeah, that, so, so, so Chance, um, a, a change, change. Yes. Um, um, Gloria shared something earlier about her, you know, some of her uh, hiccups in her, in, her, in her marriage when she was. Um, and I heard marriage in your repertoire as well. Yes. So give us something that you can say, man, listen, man, I, I blew it here, man. I just, I just went cold turkey in this woman. I know I was thinking, man, you know, I was just, you know, not in the right mind. I was having a bad day, you know. Well, Tell something me, deep about that. Yeah. Well, for me personally, I don't like arguments. Oh, you, oh you, okay. You're, you're passive-aggressive, huh? Yes, passive-aggressive, is that what it is? Passive-aggressive? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 personally, I personally always think, I mean, <laughs> it, it is fairy tale, but I always believe that if we are both together, we're living together, we should always think what we should do to make each other happy every single day. Wow. You know, um, if there is a problem, we're mm -hmm. supposed to can talk about the problem without it turning into an argument. So where have mm -hmm. you gone now? Where where it turned into something that was where you didn't you didn't want to go there, but it went there. So something yeah. about that one. Well, for me personally, I mean everything, everything. <laughs> <everywhere. said> everything. <laughs> tell me, tell everything. me, change. Tell me now. Tell yeah. me at that time when it went it went south. You know what I mean? You're trying to go north, but like well, oh my god, uh, it went south. Um, it was. I'm the one that I always hear, and every time there is an argument. That's why I said before that. You know, forgot a birthday. So, you forgot a birthday? No, no. Okay. It was just every time. For me personally, I have a lot of female friends. I don't oh. really keep I don't really keep male friends. I mean, time too serious, you don't know who you're you're, you're around. But even when you're married to? What? Even even when you're married, you keep, you have female friends? Yeah, I have female friends, but I keep my distance. Oh, you are, you you are tr oh, that's trouble. That's trouble there. Ch no. Change. No, I. <laughs> no, I have no man friend in <laughs> No, I have uh, a few. I have a few male friends in her. And but uh -huh. majority of who I communicate with are females. But oh, I, goodness. I learn to keep. I learn to keep my distance. I mean, yeah. when I when I got married, um, you know things didn't just change overnight but as you go along okay and think, as see. you go along and think along the way you realize that you know you need to change up a lot of things you know so so so, so change did she bring it up like you know it, it changed all these women friends how no, did you well, kind of initiate that that thing no it, 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 it always bring up because if if there's a conversation and say for instance there is something and i mentioned to her that um you know that this female called me and said X Y Z to me. Instead of to stop and listen, the first thing I say, oh, I want your girl. Why should I call oh, your phone? Huh. Okay, so, okay, okay, so, okay. Gotcha, so gotcha. You. Yeah. So you realize now that I mean, we cannot have a conversation. You mm -hmm. understand? Because mm -hmm. if there, if I'm going to say, Mary, come to me and said this to me. Yeah. And you're not going to stop to listen. I am not going to say. Okay. Okay. You know, so that was one of the nagging things to me until it reached a point where, you know, I see where where I was losing myself, you know. Okay. I mean, yeah, man, I, I curse, curse, even even God turning back when we finished curse. Don't cheat. Wow. Check it. Check it. Check it. <laughs> you know, and what the word, word. Yeah. And oh, I, I've, I've reached a place where I've stopped mm. to reflect and said, why am I making one person putting me at a place where no one I've ever want to see me because um, I grew wow. up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. um, my family, grandmother, 
and mother. Mm-hmm. You know, they taught me to be respectful to there everyone. Mm-hmm. And then when I reached a place where I, I made because of one person, I'm being very disrespectful mm-hmm. and being angry. I have to be at a place where I say, you know what? Mm-hmm. I need to back up. Time for a change. Yes. Wow. You know, but um, there is one thing I've learned, though. In relationship, a lot of people get involved in relationship without overcoming their past relationship. So they, tr- they, 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 come, they go into a new relationship with an unforgiving spirit because you have to learn to forgive your past. Oh, when wow. you reach a, when you reach a, Yeah, when you reach that place where you and your past can stand up and have a conversation without your feeling this burning sensation in your heart and it's raising far mm. fast and cold sweat washing you you know that you forgive that person mm. you know so, and so. i i believe a lot of us struggle with mm-hmm. that we, we, we carry it over we don't yes. we don't really cut it yes right so way. even if you're in a relationship and you probably do something that may be similar to what your past did, you start to look at the person and say, oh, see him where Tom did do me, so I saw you won't come do me. Yes, I've experienced that in um, with someone who actually kept going back you know, as if, you know, it was like, it was almost like uh, I was a trigger. Yes. And I think that's when, when I went to the concert, it was like, you know, you can you can hear and, and do things through your experience. And the first time I, I, I did hear that. So th- that's a great point you, you're making there. Yeah, so... I'm guilty I mean, of that too. For 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 me personally, um, I've learned to forgive. It's 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 one of the hardest things I've I've learned. Mm-hmm. But when when I reach that place where I've learned to forgive, I realize that it don't make the person better. It only make me better. Yes. You know, and learning to love was one of the hardest things, especially um, you know. We here in Jamaica, we grew up in our culture where we say, man, no love, man. <laughs> you know, and when I moved come to Kingston and I, the church that I went to, I see man, again, man. I'm like, I'm not mm-hmm. in this type of stuff. But then you realize that it was just one big family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've learned, I can look at a man and say, you know, so I mean, love you. I mean, nice. I'm not behind it. Exactly. You know? You know, um, I remember one Sunday I went to church and I, I say a friend of mine and him dressed well good. And I said to him, I said, you look good this morning, you know. Mm. And him, him cursed me and him go on the most. And I said to him, I said, you have to learn. You have to learn mm-hmm. to love yourself. Yes. Yeah. You understand? And yeah, when you learn to love yourself, then you can express it to others. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I've learned to forgive people mm. and Forgiveness work for me, mm. <laughs> you know. And any situation I go through, yes, it may be rough, and you know, it may reach a place where so me tell you, say, me no want to deal with the person, I me no want to have nothing to do with them. Mm-hmm. But when I, when I, in my bed, looking in the ceiling, and me and God having a conversation, mm-hmm. you know, and He start to show me a lot of stuff. I am the one who is quick to call and say, you know what? I am sorry and mm-hmm. I apologize. I, I don't say I'm sorry that easy still, but, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean, um, I love, but for me personally, relationships are good. Two different personality coming together. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't know what I have been through. I don't know what you have been through. You may say something to me, I snap. I I say something to you, you snap. But we have to reach at a place where we have to say, okay, then instead of, of snapping at each other, how about we sitting down and getting to understand each other? Mm-hmm. Because the more we understand each other, we will grow and learn each other better each day. True, true. I wow. agree with that. I agree with that. We're going to go to the comment section where we have Miss Brown and she's saying, um, me too. I am. I you have come become in? comfortable oh, with okay. repentance. It's good for me. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I thought I lost the ability to love, but forgiveness, growth, and meeting new people brings healing. Yeah. Um, and relationship is power, and it yeah. definitely is power. Um, even talking about forgiveness or so, it's it's also it's a part of the strategy used to help to better um mm -hmm. and make make us have stronger relationship as, as it says, forgiveness is a necessity for peace. Yeah. And even going through my situation, I also had to learn forgiveness and mm -hmm. learn peace with myself because I think um, there was a lot of toxicness in mm -hmm. that marriage that I was in because um, there were things that were not being shared. There were okay. things that were being brought up um, about past and I had to realize that, hey, I didn't love myself. I was expecting the other person to love me. Mm, so that's important, all, important point, yeah. Right. So that's also made the relationship more toxic because everything that you say to me hurts me now because I believe you what you're saying. Mm. Right? And that's what makes it toxic. Because if the person is saying negative things and you're not responding to it, there cannot be any argument. Mm -hmm. right but the mere fact of responding to it is also because we're probably not sure about ourselves and if it's true about us mm -hmm. and so we have to even learn to forgive people that say things to us even in the heat of the moment it's it's in the yeah. heat of the moment in an argument you know and, and, and things are said mm -hmm. things are said trust me I love that <laughs> things are <laughs> said and I've, I've said this i've said this already to persons listen I've learned to not respond to everything and I'm not mm -hmm. going to respond because anything that I say to you, I'm not apologizing for it. Yep. Mm. I'm not apologizing yeah. for it. So what I do know is if there's an argument or if there's something, I am someone who thinks a lot now. So I think before I say something to you yeah. and if I'm angry or upset before the word comes out, I'm going to think about it because if I ever respond to you, I'm not sure if I'm going to, if I ever respond, I don't know if I'm going to come and say, you know, I'm sorry for what I said because I actually meant it. Am I sorry for what I really said? Mm -hmm. So I have to learn now to take a step back. We're okay. Um, and as it says, we're not, we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. So because I'm not perfect, I don't want to slip and say something that hurts you. And now you're going to carry it for the rest of your life because we can't take back words. True. So it's best for us to, try and make our communication better um, by not responding and learning to forgive people, even learning to forgive ourselves for taking certain things. And we have mm -hmm. to just grow from it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're also going to touch on the, some, some tips, some tips for becoming a better communicator. Right. And one of them is, you know, we have to learn to listen and uh, we have to pay attention to body language because that's important. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to ask questions mm -hmm. and we need to learn to find common ground and don't be afraid of a little silence. I think when there is a lot of silence, people become afraid. Yeah. Because, hey, what are you thinking? Oh, so why are you quiet? Why are you not talking to me? And yeah. sometimes people do need that space mm -hmm. to think. And people do need that quiet time because if there's no, sometimes it does, sometimes when there's an argument or something is about to blow up, people just need to be still. Yeah. Be still. Let's not, yeah. let's not um, just jump up and say something as we said earlier, because half of the time when we do that, we're missing what we're missing something. There's, there's always something. There's a broken communication right there that we're not seeing. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand what it is. So sometimes when there's an argument, sometimes we need to sometimes be quiet. I mean, I said to my husband, my, my husband, no. If we're having an argument, we will either say to each other, listen, I don't like you right now. Mm, that's honest, and, yeah. And I need, I, need, I need time right now. Sometimes he gives too much time. But <laughs> I would say, listen, I don't like you right now. Or he would say, hey, I don't like you right now. But let's just take some time off. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, when we're both calm, we can have a conversation about it without raising our voice, without shouting, without communicating with the hands, you know, because I communicate with my hands. So without mm -hmm. communicating with the hands, <laughs> without body language, 
and we'll have a better communication and we'll have a better conversation about an issue. And I remember even the other day, there was something that came up and I said to him, hey, you know, I really didn't like it. But before I even said that, mm. I went over it in my mind a number of times. <laughs> How it's going to come out, what I'm going to say, the tone I'm going to use, the body mm. language I'm going to use. Because listen, all those things alone is going to cause a problem if it is that it's showing. So I had to talk to myself about it for some time. In fact, I went to sleep on it because it was very stressful for me to do. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm normally someone that responds. So I had to sleep on it and then wake up and talk to him about it. And he said, boy, we have come a far away because normally you'll be, you know, uh -huh. yeah, I'll say about it. Um, and I said to him, I just thought about it. It's better to come and talk to you about this in this way than to make it an argument. Because what an argument does, you know, is stop a couple from growing, stop a couple yeah. from healing. Yeah. We mm -hmm. can learn from an argument, but sometimes we prolong our arguments. Yeah. Because yes. of our egos. And we don't want, we don't want to feel like, oh, well, I have to say sorry. So I am mm -hmm. wrong. We don't want to always feel wrong. And we always don't want to feel like we're not being heard. So we like to let the other person come to us and apologize or say whatever. But it only stifles the relationship. So, yeah. yeah. But then you again, know, sometimes... I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go down. Go ahead. I'll change. Okay. But then again, sometimes um, there's an argument and you try to stay silent. And the more you stay silent, is the more problem it creates. Oh, Jesus. Um, you know, um, <laughs> so... That that's that's the next thing, you know, because you stay quiet. Um, the other person believes that oh, you're upset, and because you're upset, a vex your vex me cannot want to, and they they start go off in all sort of stuff. And you know, they always say in school that sticks and stone will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words that is a hurt. lie. That is a yeah. lie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you know something. You know something. <laughs> that's a very important thing, you know. And I think that you know, if I could, if I could put something in, in place as some kind of mandate or some kind of format for people to have good or an effective relationship. Yeah. You ask some, you ask a child, what do you want to be in life? Okay. I want to be a nurse. Okay. I want to be a fireman. Okay. I want to be a pastor. I want to be this. Now, if you want to be that person, what do you think does it require to be a nurse? If yeah. you really want to be a nurse and wear that white uniform. Okay. You want to be getting married, right? You want to have a relationship. What do you really want that to look like? Let's be honest with yourself. What do you really want in a relationship? Okay, I want it to look like this. So now that's the point of what you want. What are you willing to do to make it happen for that thing to bloom and blossom and be amazing? Because I realize that many people they don't know who they in fact they don't they don't they don't know what they really want in a relationship. No. They yeah. know they want someone, they don't want to be lonely. They know that. They know they may want sex a lot. They but know they may they want, want to have uh backup, you know, in case emergency. You can call my call my spouse in case, you know, they I, I don't want to die alone, maybe. Yeah. But they don't really know what they really want in a relationship. So they don't even know how to even shoot after it after it and how to put the right things in place to accomplish that. They're basically trying to learn themselves. And having a whole lot of conflict going on. So that's why I think we see so many different um, issues. Folks, we're listening to LTR, Let's Talk Relationships. We're here with uh, um, Chance tonight and uh, one of our guests. And we've been talking about different aspects of relationships, toxic relationships, and how we can possibly avert that and make it a, a whole, more wholesome experience, be it a friendship or a relationship or marriage or even a business relationship. How we can, we can have an effective cohesive existence mm -hmm. where we can enjoy more than despair. You know what I'm saying? Change. We yeah. can have a fantastic life. And I heard you spoke earlier. Um, so appreciate what you said, because I'm sure people listening, you said, listen to me, man, I started off like this and I had to take a check, you mm -hmm. know, to yeah. speak to the men out there who have, who want to start a relationship, maybe want to get married. And they have a whole lot of female friends out there. Um, speak to those men and say, maybe what, what, what can maybe encourage them to think about, before they tie the knot, how did they should approach it? Maybe to not to make the wife feel so distressed and so stressed. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> um, for me personally, I and I want to let 
men out there know that marriage is a good thing, you know. Um, despite maybe some people going through some very rough patches mm -hmm. in their marriages, but marriage is a good thing. It's it's always good to um, you know, just have someone in your corner, someone who is there for you at all times. Um, as men, we have to learn to um, limit mm -hmm. um, female friends, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes some female friends, friendship where you have, you don't need mm. because it only puts you in more trouble than anything else. I you know, you. because sometimes you're just having a conversation and then the conversation just gone down one road. Mm -hmm. And worse if it's a text conversation and then you put on your phone and your wife take it up and see it and then, you know, it cause a, a big problem, mm -hmm. you know. So sometimes, as men, when you, you're in a relationship or you're married, I mean, you have female friends, you have to draw the line, um, let people know that, hey, this is what you're saying, I don't think it is right because if my wife see it, I know the trouble what it's going to cause. It is better to tell them the truth yeah, and they get upset with you yeah. more than if you're there saying, oh, no, man, everything cool. And then by the end of the day, it is cool with them because you tell them that it is cool. But at the same time, you're living in a hell hole at home. Wow. Well well said, well said. I, I personally feel that, uh, Glory, you probably test to me to share something from, that, from a woman's perspective, but as a male... Prior to being married, I can have a thousand friends, but when I'm married, I can never make the mistake of saying my friend yeah. to another woman. Um, but as she said, Keith, your friend call you, but I will never say my friend. You're not going to say it to her, I'll never say it to my wife, that's my friend. No, we ain't got no friends here. It's me and you, baby. You're my friend. You know what I mean? Because it's, for a woman, it's a whole different story. For them, it's a different thing when they hear that word, my friend. Yeah. So that's just my 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 thing on that. Laura, what do you say? So you for me, oh. mm -hmm. so so Sorry. for me, I I have male friends, yeah. um, but I have learned to be married, yeah. Yeah. To limit those male <laughs> friends, and even curb the conversations I have with those male friends. Yeah. And what I do purposefully mm -hmm. is, if it is I'm having a conversation with my male friend, I let my husband know. There you go. Um, because, or even if he doesn't know at that instance, I say, you know, you know, that so-and-so this is happening or, you know, I'm on the phone with so-and-so, you know, to just, to just make him be aware so that he's not, yes. who is a young, I, I don't like the arguments. And I believe that I can have friends as long as there's respect there and everybody yeah. knows their place. Yeah. yeah, that's where I am. Um, even speaking about this topic, um, I came up with a book recently that talks about things left unsaid before I do, wow. um, which is Diary of Gloria at the Gold, and it speaks about things that should have been spoken about before, before I like marriage. That. I like that. Yeah. Um, and it also spoke to the fact that hey, if these things are not spoken about, things that we see as trivial, and it's you know we don't need to really talk about it. Why? To bite things, you. Mm. Those things can end the marriage, actually. Yeah, so um, true. I so saw in, in that mindset, it's really to, to, to help people that, hey, not because um, you love this person and you don't want the person to leave you means you're not going to talk. You have to speak about things because that love, that love it of a stage and that honeymoon stage goes mm. after a time. It goes mm -hmm. because there are times you're not going to like this person. Yeah. Um, so things talk talk about things with your partner always talk about it till you're tired. Mm -hmm. People don't like to talk, but sometimes you must talk till you kill the conversation. You kill it. <laughs> you dissect every piece of the conversation because sometimes we even leave out things that are necessary that we probably shouldn't have left out, or yeah. we're you know under, understanding each other better. So for 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 my last words to people, there is have conversations with your spouse and have them in a respectful way. Not everything that your spouse says to you, it's demeaning or shouldn't be demeaning. And ensure that you ask them, what do you mean by that? 
Yep. Why are you upset? Why are you upset? Let's let's talk about it. What did this mean to you? That will save a lot of marriages, and it will actually allow couples to be friends and not just be married to each other. And friendship is vital. It's important. Wow. Well, thank you, Gloria. I think before we go, let me not change. Just say the last word here before we close out this segment here. Go ahead, Jack. Change. Um. <clears throat> Well, I, I guess Gloria said everything, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me personally, as much as you know, having having your wife, you have to make she feel that she is number, number one. one. Yeah, you know, she is priority. Um, but at the same time, we both have to face reality. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes. Your your wife will say to you, "Oh, oh, me not, oh, oh, you can't carry me out. Oh, you can't this. Oh, you can't do that." But sometimes we have to look at where we are financially, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes, um, as I always say, I personally believe that um, in a marriage, you you may love your partner going to bed, but at some point, money going to become an issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very tough, very high yeah. on the scale. Mm. Yes, it, it's gonna become an issue. Um, as for me, I, I always, from my left Digicel, the company I used to work with from about 2008, there about or so, I tell myself that I wasn't gonna work with nobody else, you know, and I try to do my own thing. I mean, but when I got married, you know, as I said, you know it. You, you grow stage by stage. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I reach a point where, you know, child get involved. All right, now, child get involved. I mean, I this is what I do, ministry. Ministry slow down. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to do a business. The business not going how I want it to go. Mm-hmm. You need, I need to get up and do something mm-hmm. you understand so yes so i mean you, you may doing a little thing over there that is coming in and that is coming in and you can put it together to make two ends meet you know but um sometime but then when your partner is not looking at you trying and motivating you to do that can be tough doing, that mm-hmm. can be very tough. You know, it, it, it's hard for you to be trying. And then by the end of the day, your wife looked at you and said to you that, oh, you need to be a man to provide for your house. Right. right. <laughs> it, that yeah. is like, oh, I'm trying so hard. But at the same time, mm-hmm. you're not looking at the positive side of it. You're seeing the negative side of it. So mm-hmm. I will encourage female out there and male motivate your partner in every circumstances mm-hmm. you know um as i always very, very important yes as i always say to people it's better you be with someone who have potential to do something more than to be with someone who have potential who have no potential at all to do anything mm. because when they do have potential to do something you have to be the stronger person to motivate them because sometimes it's just the drive they need to, to move forward at it. Mm, you know? Wow. So, but instead of most of us, instead of we motivate each other, we discourage each other. And yeah. we, we, say some, we say some shady things that hurt each other. You right? can't and take then, back. Yes. Can't and, take then, back. and then now we expect that, okay, things will forever be the same. Mm. You know? So. I hear, I hear you. You know, it's like as you as you speak in there. I heard, I mean, I mean, another part show, like a part two of this. <laughs> Definitely, because, because what you're saying you you, you touch you, you kind of open a can of worms right there. Yes, yes, it did. You know, we are going to close in a minute, but but it it kind of opens that you know that we really this this conversation thing is really a, a, an issue for many people. Yes, because like you said, when you said that word, you can't take it back like so easily. No, it's no. gone. And and um, you know, <laughs> of course, you know, men tend tend to uh. Be more forgiven on this, but um, it does. But what, what we do hurt as well. We feel like, my God, you know, we feel sometimes demotivated. We feel almost humiliated as a man. We feel like we are demasculated. 
Yeah. And and so, so the words are so important now, especially from one that you love and care about. And most men will tell you, I would die for this woman. I give the world to her. Yeah. I, I, you know, if I had the moon, I'd give it to you. I put it at your feet because, you know, it's just about, it's about making you happy. Right. Most men yeah. will tell you that, that if I had it, it's yours. Yep. You know, yeah. and most men do what they do for the woman. Yep. You know, they, there was no one around. We'd be, we'd be in the forest here chopping, chopping trees and drinking coconut water all day long. We don't mm-hmm. care, you know. But for the woman, we get the Ferrari, we get the big house, we do stuff just for her. Mm-hmm. You know, so a lot of women don't get that. So because sometimes they might be impatient mm-hmm. or maybe it seems too long or it's not, not consistent the way they stay, things supposed to come, they may say some things. So it's a tough road. Yes, I'm yeah. in a part two in this now. I really am, <laughs> but, and, and, but but but, <laughs> but definitely next time I will yes. make sure I yes. log on as early as possible. So we can hear more. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, but I thank you for coming on tonight, uh, Mr. Exchange. Yeah, and um, we look forward to meeting you again, having you as a guest again in the future. Definitely, You're definitely a fun dude. You know, you open up and you know, yeah. and um, it's a blessing here. Yes, and of course, oh Gloria, what can I say? My goodness, <laughs> you have Thank made you. this show, you made this uh, night so special. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank for you for being who you are and, and remain that open, transparent lady. Yes, thank you so much. DJ yes, ATV. we thank all our viewers, we thank uh, our engineer, the producers, they're doing they're just fantastic, and without them, this wouldn't happen. So, we are ever so grateful for this platform here. Yes, and again. Let's talk relationship, guys. Yes. We look for we look to see you again next week, Monday night, same place, same time. Yes. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. And uh God willing, I'll be back with Gloria. Who knows? Let's see. Ah. <laughs> Let's talk relationships on, on you, me, me radio. radio. So what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business, and love. Emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty, and DJ KTE on everything from hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationship arguments for the grown get the yumi radio app to listen wherever you are that is ume radio one word ume radio positive entertainment 24 7 subscribe on youtube and click the notification bell